we can choose to teach what we teach differently. Yeah. And and for me that's what I decided to do even in the system that they were. When I was in Makere, my, my classes, I, I, I was very intentional on how I taught my classes. Yeah. I opted to be a facilitator as opposed to a lecturer. Yeah. Two, I allowed co-learning. We learn together. Yeah. I, am not, I am not the epitome of knowledge. Yeah. If you have learned something and you think it's beneficial, let's share it. That's the second thing, that, 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 that come to the realization that knowledge is not housed in one brain. Yeah. Knowledge is... God, God is gracious. Yeah. Each one of us has a portion of knowledge <laughs> about some of the things. When you trigger people to go and search, they will go. When you trigger people to sit back and depend on you, they will sit back. Yeah. I'll say trigger people to go and search. Wow. You will teach the same things, but the outcomes will be different. Yeah. My final shot to those of us that are very passionate about education and want to change, when it is so painful with what you're doing, you'll do what I'm doing at Refactory. You'll choose to go against status quo. And, and, and I hope history will judge you fairly. <laughs> When that time comes, um, I, I, I can say, yeah, I've trained about 300 people at Refactory. We've trained about, it's not only me, we've trained about 300 people at Refactory. We have about an average of about 70 to 83% percent placement. I, I can say I'm happy. I'm a very happy person because I know for a fact that the current placement rate for fresh university graduates is below 10%. So for me to be at 83%, yeah, I feel I can walk on the clouds, but I won't. There's still <laughs> a lot of work to be done. Yeah. And so each one of us has an individual responsibility for yeah. those of us that are in the education space. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully each one of us can then create that summative change that we need to see. Thank you. at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They have moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. Mm -hmm. The other one I call I never call it Facebook. It's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes, yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. And I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Yeah, remember Prince? Yes. Yeah, Prince. Yeah. Prince. Yeah.
My name is Martin Anthony Nsuvuga. I'm the CEO of Uganda Retirement Benefits Social Authority. And I've served the institution until now. We have grown to the position of the Chief Executive Officer. So I've seen Ubra since its establishment. Um, I was also uh, the person who started the organization as interim CEO uh, for the organization. Um, my role was uh, to set up the organization and, uh, and here we are. It has been a really new experience in my life. As um, you may have heard, Ubra was non-existence. There was no formal regulatory environment for pensions or retirement benefits. So we are a pioneer. We were appointed to set up the architecture and the environment for regulation of retirement benefits and uh, pensions. So the Ministry of Finance, uh, because I was the technical person really handling uh, all these reforms, they asked me to come and set up this institution, which is the Retirement Benefits Regulatory Authority. So I was uh, requested to start as an uh, interim uh, chief executive officer, uh, which I did from the year 2012 um, to early 2015. It's been a great journey. When we started, we started from scratch. The journey of 10 years of Ubra started with an Act of Parliament of 2011. But actual operation started in 2012, and that's why we are celebrating 10 years today. There was no institutional setup, there were no laws, uh, there was nothing. So we started with the legal framework, uh, putting in place the legal framework that uh, establishes uh, the supervisor or the regulator for the retirement benefit sector. Before then, Ubra came into the market about 10 years ago. The first thing they did, right from their first offices, at communication house was to take stock of the market. Who are the players? Who are the retirement players in the market? Who are the service providers? Which schemes are operating in the market? Service to note that there was already something happening in the market even before Ubra came to play. And because of that, there were Ponzi schemes, there were things, there was no trust uh, in the sector. So our primary objective was to build a system that would do uh, instill confidence in the general public. I believe the journey has been very successful. We have a footprint now in the community, um, and that footprint is best exemplified by the growth of the pensions sector. Uh, as uh, when we were appointed, uh, the pension sector savings were less than less than five trillion. Today they are approaching 20 trillion. A number of proposals were carried uh, to parliament and the biggest one was to actually put in place a sector regulator. My role as a member of parliament when I came in 2008 pension funds which were missing in this country. I'm proud that now we have over 19 trillion shillings in the pension fund. That's a very good contributor to national development. And in the future, I'm sure, this money we shall not go to borrow. We shall use this money of the pension fund to really develop our country. You would appreciate that uh, this is not a small contribution uh, for a sector that was not regulated. Uh, but overall, it was part of the global reforms that we are seeing in other countries uh, in the pension sector. To me, that's a, a plus for the authority. And we can imagine in a very short time, in less than 10 years, we have over 19 trillion. It believes that within the next five years, we should be over 40 trillion. To me, that is a plus for, for Uber and a, a surety for the people of Uganda who save with these different schemes, knowing that somebody is there making sure that my money that I put in any scheme is safe, is protected. So one of the main objectives was to safeguard the interest of the members. Now, what this means is that the moment members' interests are safeguarded, their rights are protected, it then boils down to growth of the sector. Now, what we've seen in the last 10 years is that the sector, the, the assets under management, have more than tripled. So within a span of 10 years. 
we are seeing a lot of efficiency in terms of members are able to get their benefits, they are able to access more information about their schemes. More importantly is the professionalism that has been injected in the sector. There has been a deliberate effort to build trust because the foundation is strong, it can be trusted, and again, the investment structures are very solid, so which means they encourage the growth of the market, the growth of the portfolio, and also provide the positive returns that we see to date. The last one that is significant, which I've seen Umbra doing, is promoting transparency. So to a member, that information creates trust within the member because you are saying there's nothing I'm hiding. This is how we run the scheme in the year. There were 13 meetings and uh, this member of the board out of 13, he attended three. In the saving schemes, there was no trust. There was no confidence. There was a lot of risk. Even the savers could not know how much their contribution is where. Okay? In other words, everything was in a disarray without any regulator. I think as well, um, looking generally at the business environment, um, you rarely now see complaints of people stating that the funds that they thought they had in their names have disappeared or have been paid to the wrong person. And all this is just because of the supervisory role that Uber has brought in, which has been pivotal in making us run a world-class pension sector in Uganda. There are three parts to any pension system. There's the contributions or collections of pensions, there is the management of the pensions or the investment of these pension savings, and then there's a the payment of these pension savings, either through a lump sum or through monthly payments. We have had a shared responsibility with Ubra for the past 10 years in the aspect of management of the savings through investments uh, because many of the fund managers whom we license are also licensed by Ubra. Although Ubra focuses a lot more on the pensions, the retirement savings that they uh, manage. So we have done this role together, we've had this shared role. The synergies we have drawn from this partnership have been very beneficial and we look forward to continuing to work together with uh, Ubra in the future. We see growth in number of schemes in this market. Today we are talking of 65 schemes. In the past we are talking of three uh, schemes that were established by an act of parliament, that is the public service pension scheme, the parliamentary pension scheme and the NSSF, all of them established by an act of parliament. More importantly is to say that the journey that Uber has walked over the 10 years have been challenging but also refreshing in a sense that they came into a virgin market. There was no regulator before them, especially in the pension sector. So what they started with was commendable. Let's do a stock taking. Let's understand the market. Who is doing what in the market? So I think that phase helped Ubra create their visibility, create their identity for the first three, four years. Over the years, they've also been able to do publicity to kind of show the market, show the public that this is what we do, and especially as you plan for your retirement. At least for the last 10 years, we've not had any corruption, loss of members' funds. We've also not had any poor investments because investments are all known, structured, in particular known asset classes that provide a very good return to the member. And actually in this period in time, that's when the sector has witnessed high returns to the members, double-digit returns for the last five years or thereabout. So in my really see going forward is the spread of coverage because the pension sector as it is now is really in the formal sector. And when you look at the working population of Uganda, if you even put it at around 20 to 25 million, the working population, not even 3 million are covered by pensions. I think my main message to you, is first of all to thank uh, the CEO, Mr. Martin Nsubuga, and his team for supporting the pension reforms that have taken place so far but also to remind the team that there's still some work to be done. Uh, it's not over, there's still some reforms that need to be done, particularly in the area of limiting access to long-term savings. So Martin and team, please don't rest. There's still some more work to be done to grow the domestic savings base of this country. As a, as a committee, Ubra needs to make itself more visible in, in Uganda, place itself 
let the people of Uganda know what they are doing. Let the people of Uganda know why they should save for retirement. If you were to ask me what should Ubra's next 10 years focus on, I would say that Ubra's next 10 years should be to now build this 20 trillion asset base that um, has been generated should actually be able to ensure a comfortable life in retirement for all members who are in the retirement schemes but Ubra should also then allow and come up with mechanisms to support the players to be able to onboard all the small holders all the informal sector to come in and secure their retirement by participating and joining the licensed pension schemes in the market and so my thinking is that we need to support the institution, particularly Parliament of the Republic of Uganda, needs to support resource mobilization for allocation to the authority so that the authority can continue with the widening the coverage. People now, instead of keeping money in boxes, will keep here and it is in the financial sector and it's easy to tap in. And the cost of money will go down, but other investment in the country will go high. And I can tell you, if you make very good regulations, we have the support of Parliament. I believe that the next 10 years are quite pivotal. We've gone through uh, the best building of the industry and right now we are at the point where we have to be tasked with generating value for our clients and exhibiting relevance over the next 10 years. I'm very, very confident. In fact, I'm, I'm really proud of, of the work that has been done for the last 10 years and my imagination runs wild. Uh, what, what is possible for the next 10 years. And um, the other key achievement that, uh, or work in progress that Ubra is trying to do, which I again encourage different stakeholders in this sector, particularly parliament, to support Ubra, is the, the coming up of, with a national micro pension scheme. Uganda is, um, our economy is largely informal, and even within the cities, we have so many people who are operating informally and yet they earn income either daily either weekly or monthly they earn income in one way or the other but if not well guided and i think this particular scheme the micro pension scheme would again help reorganize our people in the formal sector to put something aside because if you are in our market today if you're a road vendor today if you're a hawker today if you're a border border today, if you're a fisherman today, you still have that energy to go nearly every day in the waters and do fishing, to go to Nakawa market every morning to pick tomatoes, vegetables. But that strength with time, with time, as years come by, begins to dwindle. That means the same basket that you can carry now, you are not able to carry in the next five years or ten. So our focus, what really keeps us awake? When I wake up in the morning, that drives my day, protection of members' funds. So what I see going forward for the next 10 years is an organization that is efficient, that is creating value for the benefits. Efficiency meaning when I contribute, I must be guaranteed that 20 years from now, 30 years from now, when I retire, my money will be there. And, and ensuring that the monies that I contribute uh, invested in assets that will do that when you hang up your boots, when I hang up this jacket in retirement, Ubra wants me to live a fulfilled life, a life bereft of poverty, a life of joy and happiness. And Ubra works with people and different entities to deliver that. As service providers, I think we'd want to say um, congratulations again, Ubra. Um, we feel the heat sometimes, but we are ready for the task. As we celebrate, let's also remember that there are those who are not yet part of the saving culture and we bring, find ways of bringing them forward. I wish you a happy celebration. As we celebrate 10 years of service protecting retirement benefits in this country, allow me to thank the Board of Directors of Uganda Retirement Benefits Authority. You have been very instrumental.